So in verse uh, 4, we discussed that there are 144,000 Jews, right? And these are virgin males, okay? These are not referring to a bunch of people in Tempe, Arizona, okay? And all of them have beards, okay? This is referring to virgin Jewish males, okay? We already discussed that earlier. Everyone wants to be a Jew, just like a Jehovah Witness. That's referring to us, the 144,000. A lot of people don't pay attention to Scripture, all right? If one of you say that I'm the 144,000 Jew, trust me, I don't have to laugh at you. My members will laugh at you, okay? So don't embarrass yourself, okay? All right, so in verse 5, let's look at the tribes. Now, pay attention to the tribes. If you know your Bible... Sunday school children should know this too, okay? So I hope you know your tribes. So if you know your tribes, you're going to find out two missing ones. But it's still going to number 12 tribes. So let's see who replaces who and who's missing. Of the tribe of Judah, we're sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben, we're sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad, we're sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher, we're sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali, we're sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Now you'll notice that the Lord, he apparently has a keen interest on the number 12. That's why Jesus Christ selected what? 12. It's always 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. And that's why even with the 12 tribes, he would divide it into what? 12,000. So that would be interesting for you to look up over here concerning the number 12. Now, the two missing tribes, if you paid attention, you will notice that they are Dan and Ephraim. Now, why are those two missing? The reason why those two tribes are missing is because there's something they did wrong. And not only that, they might contribute, they might play a part in the tribulation for the Antichrist kingdom. So they might play a part in that. So if you study concerning about uh, Jewish elites, Rothschilds, and etc. about the conspiracies, these two tribes maybe might have a play in that one. It's possible. But I'm going to show you some interesting verses where these two might have a play in the tribulation in a bad way, actually. But the Lord, he gave a promise concerning about the restoration of all tribes as well. So you got to realize this. The Jews currently right now are in sin and in darkness and blinded from the truth. So that's why when we talk about God will restore the nation of Israel, people don't like that. Especially people who are digging, uh, digging into conspiracies more than the Bible. Yeah. So because they do that, they want to deny scripture, that God will restore the nation and the tribes of Israel. And that's why some people who dig into conspiracies would like to say that they are the real Jew. So here's the thing is that, no, you got to realize that Satan, who he wants to aim for, are God's people. And if you think that Satan does not have the capability to get God's close people to become one of the most demonic people, you're dead wrong. That's right. He did that with Judas Iscariot, did he not? Yeah. All right. So let's look at some interesting things concerning Dan and Ephraim. So why did God kick them out? There was something they did wrong. Let's look at Genesis chapter 49. Let's look at the book of Genesis. Now notice what Jacob prophesies concerning the tribe of Dan. Genesis chapter 49. Now, notice that Dan's prophecy, it's supposed to be a positive prophecy for him. But there is one thing in here that Satan noticed about this positive prophecy that he wants to turn it into something negative. So remember that. So maybe a good devotional lesson is this, is that whatever God blessed you in your life, Satan might find something, some blessing in your life where he could switch that to something negative. So you pay attention to that and take guard on your life, all right? So let's look at Genesis chapter 49. We'll read verse 17. Dan shall be a what? Serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, 
O Lord. So notice right here that at verse 17, that Dan, how he's going to conquer his kingdom and gain power is by being a serpent. Now in your Bible, a serpent is usually a negative uh, connotation, right? Who is known as the serpent in the Bible? It's Satan, correct? The Bible calls him the serpent at the book of Revelation chapter 12. So the serpent will still be there. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent was there. First time Satan's mentioned, he was called the serpent. Jesus Christ, he, uh, the only time he would equate with himself as a serpent was when he had to take the worst kind of sin and the curse of the universe all upon himself. So we see right here that Dan, he's going to be known as a serpent. And Satan sees that, so he wants to use that for his own gain. Uh, as a sneaky serpent conquering his kingdom. And it may be that if you look at verse 18, see, on, at the end, when God restores the nation of Israel, then Dan could probably be restored. But in that meantime, he's going like this. And while he was going like this, if you read the Mosaic books, that's how the Lord used him. But Satan saw that talent of Dan. Now equate yourself with Dan here, okay? Satan saw that talent of Dan that the Lord mightily used, and he took that and used it to his advantage of conquering kingdoms and gaining power. So where you hear about concerning about certain Jewish elites today, it could be that they could be from this tribe perhaps. But let's keep reading. We're going to look at other passages. We're going to look at Judges. Now here's the big interesting one. Let's look at Judges. You ever wondered where the Roman Catholic Church came from? So let's look at the book of Judges and see what the Bible says. Look at Judges and we'll look at chapter, let's see here, 12. Chapter 12. Uh, no, actually, I gave the wrong chapter. It's, cha it's way ahead, 17 and 16. So right there, sorry. It's after Samson. So look at Ro Judges chapter 17, please. Judges chapter 17. Now, can I tell you some interesting things here? The previous chapters before Judges 17 was about a person named Samson, actually. Now, Samson, do you know what tribe he came from? He came from Dan's tribe, actually. And you know how he died? By suicide. Now, you know how uh, the Antichrist died? The spirit of Judas Iscariot? How did he die? Suicide. Oh, okay. Anyway, is that a coincidence? I don't know, but... But let's look at Judges chapter 17. I digress, right? Like one preacher would say. All right, so let's look at Judges chapter 17. Look at verse 1. And there was a man of where? Mount Ephraim. Ooh, Ephraim. All right. Hmm. What did he do? We're going to look at verse 5. And the man Micah had an house of gods. So... What religion would have a bunch of different idols? And made an ephod and teraphim. What house would hold certain decorations of the church? And consecrated one of his sons who became his what? Priest. What, house, what religion today will have a priest with idols and all that? All right. You don't need to be a genius. Uh-oh is right. Uh-oh is right. As the Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained praise, right? All right. Okay, let's look at verse 9. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I find a place. Look at verse 10. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a what? Father, Father and a priest. You see that together? You see that together? It's getting, in, it's getting even worse. That's right. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. So notice right here, uh, at verse 12 as well, he became his priest. And look at verse 13. A typical Roman Catholic might say this, right, at verse 13. Then said Micah, now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest, right? That's why these Catholics will uh, treat these priests really well, right? You members could learn a few th lessons from the, from the Catholics and give me something. But anyway, <laughs> just kidding. But anyway, the point is this. The point is, is that you notice that there's this Roman Catholic mentality here 
about if I take care of uh, <clears throat> this priest, then the Lord's going to really bless me physically, physical prosperity right here. All right. But guess which tribes take him. We're going to look at verse 1, eight, chapter 18, verse 1. In, their, in those days, there was no king in Israel. And those days, the tribe of the who? Danites. Ooh. So Ephraim would turn to this Babylonian Catholic religion. And the Danites too, maybe? Well, we're going to look at verse... Let me turn over the page here. Look at verse 11. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites again... Out of Zorah and out of Eshtal, 600 men appointed with weapons of war. Look at verse 14. Then answered the five men, these are the Danites, that went to spy out the country of Laish and said unto their brethren, do we, not, do we know that there is in these houses, they're attracted to this Babylonian, quote-unquote, Catholic religion, an ephod and teraphim and a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore consider what ye have to do. Now look at verse 17. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither and took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image and the priest stood in the entering of the gate. Uh, look at verse 19. And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us. And notice that an Ephraimite not only said, Be my father and my priest, but a Danite also said what? Be unto us a what? A father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man or that thou be a priest to a tribe and a family in Israel? So that's why the Danites took that Babylonian Catholic religion with them. But notice which two tribes are attracted to this Babylonian Catholic religion. Dan and Ephraim. Already a red flag there. Now, Let's look at several more verses. We're going to turn to the book of 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 2 Kings, excuse me, 2 Kings chapter 10. 2 Kings chapter 10. What happened at the days of the nation of Israel, I wonder? I hmm. wonder what happened at the days of the nation of Israel. We're going to look at the book of 2 Kings. And then we'll look at chapter 10. Notice that it carries on to Ahab's religion at verse 1. And Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders and to them that brought up Ahab's children. So Ahab is in play over here. If you look at 1 Kings chapter 16, what you're going to find out which is interesting is that around the country of Zid Zidonians, that's where Ahab married Jezebel. Now, if you go back to Judges 17, if you're curious, I already taught this at our last lesson, right? But if you go back to Judges 17, what did you notice? When the Danites went up, they were around the area of the Zidonians. That's where they were heading toward. Isn't that interesting? So what was going on? This Baalite religion, which Roman Catholics adopted later on. All of it was coming from a Babylonian source. See that? Wait a minute. Which religion will be revived at the tribulation? Babylon, right? See, this is all connected here. So we see already a, a, an assimilation with the Antichrist, Satan, and Babylon. Why do you think at Revelation it will mention these beings at play during the tribulation? See, these two tribes are carrying something with them. All right, we're going to also look at 2 Chronicles chapter 10. 2 Chronicles chapter 10. 2 Chronicles chapter 10. And then look what Jeroboam does. Jeroboam, he's going to take the religion, and you're going to notice which areas that they're going to do this at. Look at the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 10. And then let me tell you a story concerning about these nations. And Rehoboam, at verse 1, went to Shechem, for to Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, 
whither he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. Now, there's a history going on. I'm not going to read the whole verses because it's just going to take too much time. But 2 Chronicles chapter 10 talks about two tribes splitting. That's the beginning of the two tribes splitting. So north and south Israel. South Israel is mostly what you're going to notice the good guys that the Lord mostly used. And then over here is going to be the remaining ten tribes. Now, when it mentions about the south, it's going to mention about Judah and Benjamin. But the key word that would represent the north would be Judah. And what's interesting is that the north, the key word that would be represented is Ephraim. Sometimes you'll notice that in the Bible. You want me to tell you something else that's interesting? If you ever heard the phrase, from Dan to Beersheba, that phrase is actually, actually a biblical phrase meaning from all the region of Israel. Why? Because Dan is all the way up at the north. So you see right here that Dan is connected with the north as well. Hmm. Okay, now let's see what the north does. You know what the north does? Now these two tribes are at play, right? And remember, they were worship what kind of religion did they believe in and were attracted to? A pre-Catholic Babylonian form, right? It is referring to Jeroboam who, who revives the worship system actually of Dan and Ephraim. But there is a passage that specifically says this. It actually and specifically says that what uh, Jeroboam revived was actually located at Bethel and Dan. That's what he's going to mention right there. And what you're the, they wanted their worship service to be at Bethel area. And what you're going to find out is that the tribe of Ephraim later conquered that city on Bethel, so which is very, very interesting.